Hello and welcome. Microsoft for the past several years has been producing a lot of powerful products and services that we use and love. Now Microsoft Teams is one of the most powerful ones for collaboration, bringing all your colleagues into one place and guess what? Getting all the content that is most important to you. My name is Haitham and I'll be walking you through all those tools and features for Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams is Microsoft's new collaboration environment. Microsoft Teams has the three C's, our colleagues, our content, and all our conversations all in one interface. This is huge, this is powerful. Microsoft Teams has Microsoft's most powerful tools in terms of communication, collaboration. Collaboration will be more seamless than ever before. We will be using Microsoft Teams effectively to change the way we do our business today Stay tuned. You can use Microsoft Teams desktop application, web app, or mobile app. Let me walk you through how we can go ahead and first access to Microsoft Teams if you don't have the desktop application. Now, in order for me to get that, what I need to do is go to any web browser. I'm using Google Chrome right now, and I will go ahead and log on to Office 365. And over here, I will see all the web applications that we use and love, and Microsoft Teams is one of them. I'll go ahead and click on Microsoft Teams, and I will go ahead and log on to my Microsoft Teams web app. You would see that if you want to get that desktop application, what you can do is get app. Once you click on get app, you will download Microsoft Teams desktop client, and you can go ahead and launch that, and it will take you to Microsoft Teams. Now the difference between the web app and the desktop application is that the web app, you can have access to it anywhere. Desktop application, it will run while you start your computer. Just like Skype for Business, once you start your computer, your notifications will start to pop up. Same idea here. Once you download the desktop application, if you get any notifications, they will pop up. You don't have to necessarily, every morning, go ahead to office.com, click on Teams, and wait for things to happen. Once you launch the desktop application, you will see that they look fairly the same. The only difference is the ones that I mentioned before. Now, having access to both will give you some benefits. You can use the desktop application if you're using your computer. You can use the web app anywhere else. Or even better, once you download the desktop application, you can go ahead and get the mobile app so you can have access to Microsoft Teams anywhere. In this video, we will learn how to create or join a new team. Now, once you've downloaded your desktop application and you're all happy and excited about it, let's go ahead and do that. Now, down below, you would see that link for create or join a new team. I'll go ahead and click on create a team. And this kind of takes me to the home page of teams or all the other teams where I get to see over here that I can create a new team. I can have a code and join a team right away. Or I'll be able to see all the public teams, just like this book club that I can join. If I hover over this book club, I can join that team right away. And you would see everything here is dynamic, changes right away. I am a part of that team by clicking on join that team. And here, if I click on that team, I can see the general channel, thinking in bets. Or maybe even better, I want to create my own team because I like to have all the control here. I will go ahead and click on create a team to create my own team. Alrighty. Now we will populate the team's name and I will call this one the training team. You can add a description so you can let people know what this team is all about. This is about training at Learn It. The next part here is asking me, hey, do you want it to be a private team or a public team? And I will click on that drop down arrow to see it. Now, a public team, anyone in the organization can join. Just like I went to the home page of Teams and I saw that book club and I joined it, it was a public team. I was able to join it. On the other hand, private teams are a handful of people that I want to invite and they will not see my team within that home page for Teams. 
I will click on private. I want to create a private team. Down below, you will see two links. The first one, create a team using an existing team as a template. If you have created teams earlier and you have kind of the same skeleton with all those channels, you want to apply the same thing, you can do that. Or if you do have an Office 365 group that you want to create a team for, well, you can create a team from an existing Office 365 group. But in my case here, I'll click on next. I just have a handful of people I want to add to this team. I'll just basically start typing here in that bar. I'll type in my coworker's name, Foz. Once I click on Foz, you would see the add button lights up right now. And I can click on add, so I can add Foz to my team. Now by default, Foz is added as a member. I see a X sign and I see a drop down arrow. The drop down arrow, what it indicates, the role of that staff member. Do I want Foz to be an owner or a member? I get to choose that here. Or maybe if I added Foz by a mistake, I can click on remove Foz and Foz is removed. Let me go ahead and search for Foz again. Click on Foz and then add. And right now I did add Foz and I'm done. So you can add all the team members that you want to be a part of this team and close. Right now I created the general team. Now in order for me to add more members to that team, you can see the ellipses right next to that team. Once you click on those ellipses, it will populate a menu of actions for you. Now by default, that team was marked as a favorite team. Maybe you want to remove from favorites. You can manage that team, add channels. What I want to do is add members. So once I click on add members, I can start typing in my coworkers names. I can add them. So I added Michael to this team. I can choose if Michael is an owner or a member. I can remove Michael if I made a mistake. Now once I close, Michael will get a notification, specifically an email notification that's telling him, hey, hey, you have been invited to that team. All right, now there are three ways to be a part of the team. You can create or join a team or have an access code to that team. But once somebody invites me to a team, I am a part of that team. I will find that team there. And for example, if somebody invited me to a team and I think they made a mistake, I don't want to be a part of that team anymore. What I can do is go to that team, click on the ellipses, and then choose leave team. And it's asking me, are you sure you want to leave the book club? Yes, please. I want to leave that team. They made a mistake and it's okay. So remember, you can add members once you create a team. And after you create a team, you can also add more members. You can leave a team and you can remove members. And I will show you how to remove members. Also, if I click on the ellipses for my team, then go to manage teams. So right now, you will see members, pending requests, channels, more settings. Down here below, I can add more members or I can use the search bar, it's up to you. Down below, you will see all the team members, Foz and Michael. Maybe I want to remove Michael. I can click on that X button to remove. Michael is no longer a part of my team. Right now, let's say I want to change Foz's role to an owner to have the same privileges that I do. I click on owner, and right now Foz and I are the owners of this team. Go ahead and try it on your own. Now, once we've added team members, changed the roles of team members, removed some of the team members, what's next is communicate with your team. Now, in order for me to communicate with the team, I'll go ahead and click on team again. And right now, by default, once I create any team, you will see that general channel is populated there. Now, channel is a discussion in a team dedicated to a department, to a project, or a certain topic. If I have a couple of projects I'm working on, well, it would be sloppy to have all those conversations in that general channel. Uh, one way to organize those topics about projects and different projects is adding channels. By clicking on the ellipses of that team, a menu of action pops up again, and what I can do, da da da, -da go all the way to add channels. Now it will ask me, hey, 
what is that channel's name? Um, we're talking about uh, creating class outlines. And then it's optional to add a description here. I can say Excel classes, PowerPoint classes, and other classes. And do I want to automatically favorite this channel to all teams or all team members? Yes. I'll go ahead and click on OK. So right now I have added a channel within my training team. So whenever I have a question about creating outlines, I'll go to this channel. Maybe we're doing a shooting videos project. So I can add that channel, shooting videos. And I'll also want to favorite that because those are the two top important projects we're working on right now. So what I can do is creating class outlines, shooting videos. And I can click on any channel here and start talking. By default, the general channel will always stay with here. And you will see the activity of whatever I just did. I added FAS, I added two channels, everything will appear down here. So if I have a question about outlines, I can go to creating outlines and I want to start the conversation. With that channel, there's a conversation tab, files, and wiki. We will talk about wikis in a later video, but wikis are uh, Hawaiian, they mean quick. Quicky, quicky, wiki. All right. In order for me to start that conversation, you've probably seen this before. You click on new conversation and you start typing and it says type an ad mention to someone. And that is cool. If you're a Facebook user, you know what that means. If you want to mention somebody specifically in that team, you can do it. But for now, I want to discover what's below here. I can format, I can attach, send emojis, GIFs, stickers, meet now. All that in Teams is amazing. I can click on Formats and I can add a subject. Oh, this reminds me of Outlook. I can send an email. I send a subject line. Uh, da -da -da -da, creating uh, outlines. And what about the Excel outline? And I have a questions about the Excel outline. When is the due date? And where will we meet? And right now, once I'm done, I can go ahead and click on send to send it. So you see the subject line is kind of bolded and cool. And where's the due date and where do we meet? I can start more conversations about different questions that I have or different things that I want to mention. And maybe I want to mention something to my coworker Foz. In order for me to at mention him, I'll use the shift to the at sign and I'll mention Foz. You see Foz pops up. Foz, are you ready? So I mentioned Foz. I asked a question here and all the team members will get notifications, banners, just like Skype for Business where it will tell them, hey, you have been mentioned. Hey, there was a comment that happened there. So right now, Foz responded to my message telling me, hey, I'm excited. And I get a banner from Foz about responding to my message. And once I add mentioned him, I send a message specifically to Foz within that team. So if we have a lot of team members, if you want to mention something to someone specifically, you can use that mention and it's kind of neat. I can attach files to the teams. I can use uh, my OneDrive for business. I can upload uh, files from my computer. I can browse my teams and channels and I can add also access to my recent files. Because it's the future, everybody loves emojis. So I can send emojis right away. I can send GIFs, stickers. And I can create a meeting with the whole team by clicking on Meet Now. So I just want to show you if I click on Meet Now, what it basically does. It will not start a meeting right away, but it will show me a preview of what I'm doing right now. So you can see, I can fix my hair before I do so can make sure that my eyebrows are straight. All right. And then by clicking on meet now, I will start the meeting. If I don't want to start the meeting right now, I can schedule a meeting later on, or I can use the meetings tab to schedule a meeting. And we will cover that in a later video. So once I'm done, I can close. 
and I'm hoping that everybody tried to create their own channels, let's talk about managing channels. I can click on any channel. Let's say that shooting video was delayed. In fact, it was canceled. So what I can do is click on that channel and I can click on the ellipses here to delete this channel. Maybe I don't wanna see it anymore. Once I click on delete, it will tell me that all the conversations that happened here will be deleted. Well, I'm pretty sure here because nothing happened actually. So I did delete that channel. And let's say creating class outlines here. We want to change kind of what this theme is about. So I can go to the ellipses over here and I want to change some of the things about this channel. I can go here and edit this channel, what that will do. Tell me, hey, do you want to edit the name or the description or do you want it favorite or not? I can change creating outlines. And in the other class here, we want to talk about the power user class and then save. So I changed the description of that team. I did delete a team. Now make sure if you want to delete a team that it's worth deleting. And remember, try this on your own. Now, once we created a team, added channels, started conversations in teams, well, right now, Foz sent me earlier. He's excited and ready. And you know what? I want to reply to Foz. But any replies I make here in the training team will be visible to all the team members. There is something I want to tell Foz, and it's kind of private about how excited he should be. I don't want Foz too excited, so I want to tell Foz, hey, just take it down a notch. <laughs> so... I want to be able to send Foz a message, a private message. This is where chat comes into play. The chat part here will allow me to go ahead and send a specific message to a specific person, not the whole team. The whole team will not see whatever chats I have there. This is for me. Just like Skype for Business, once you start searching for somebody's name, you will find them and then you can start chatting with them. Over here, it's the same. But the layout is different. You can see once I click on chat, I see recent contacts. And over here at the top bar, you would see that button that says new chat. So wherever you navigate in Microsoft Teams, you will have that here at the top. So you don't have to worry about clicking on chat and then clicking on new chat. I'll go ahead and select it. I want to send a message to Michael. Let's start typing in Michael's name and I'll see Michael pops up here at the top. And all the previous chats that I had with Michael are all here. So I can click down below on type a new message. And I will start typing. Are you still available? And once I entered, I would see that my message is populated here. It went to Michael right away. Down below, I can see the format. The clips for attachments, emojis, GIFs. You know what? I'm so fun. I just want to send Michael my name in emoji world. And that's a hi. And then that's a thumb. So I kept my name till this part so I can tell you I'm a high on thumb. And you probably people are looking at the thumbs and their highs. <laughs> so, hey, Michael is available. And I can tell Michael, hey, it's me. Hi, thumb. Uh, there we go. And... Those emojis are cool to use. It's the future. Everybody uses emojis. And I want to say, it is raw. I want to be so cool with Michael. So we can send emojis. We can collaborate here. Also by adding files and documents. It's not all about emojis and stickers. So right now you'd see Michael is typing. So I can see that. And I hope he responds with something more awesome. Ah, that's lame, Michael. A star, spinning star, that's all you got? <laughs> Something else here I want to mention, I can go ahead and schedule a meeting between Michael and I. So if we said, eh, that star is really cool, I want you to teach me how to do it. I, I want to schedule a meeting. So if you've used Outlook before, this looks familiar. I can say, I can say stars and choose the location. Maybe we want to do it online. Maybe I want to find rooms if you have any rooms available. Start and end time of that meeting. And I can type in here details for that meeting. And I can invite more people. So if I wanted to invite Foz, for instance, well, maybe I'm inviting right now Michael and Foz, and I can schedule that meeting. 
We'll be talking about schedule meetings later on. I just happened to find myself clicking on that button and ending up over here. So right now, once I'm done, I can click on schedule, but I'm not gonna do that. We will do it in a later video. So right now, Michael and I, we're chatting. Nobody else can see this chat. Oh, Michael was thinking heavily about sending me this, uh, <laughs> this gift. All right, Michael, we're so fun, I know. Uh, let's say Michael and I, we don't have the answers to all the questions here. And I want to add one coworker of ours to help us figure out which one is the coolest emoji down here. Over here at the top bar, you see Michael's name, see conversations that we are on, and it's kind of highlighted and have a blue line below conversation. I can add files, organizations, activities, and even more. We'll talk about those in a second. But right now, what we're going to add is a staff member. So I will go all the way to the right side where I get to elevate this to a video call or a call or share my screen. Oh, I wanna add Foz. Foz has all the answers all the time. So once I click on add people, I can add in Foz. Just to let you know, once I add Foz, Foz will not see any of this that we just talked about earlier. Once I click on add, Foz is right now added to a chat between Michael and I. So I can say any suggestion on the coolest emoji. And I can send it to that team members. They all get notifications. And now Foz and Michael can think deeply about my amazing question. Now my coworkers and I, we had a lot of fun and it's time to get to work. Well, we're done talking about emojis and I'm still talking to Foz and Michael and you would see their names is populated there. Now, if you wanna to get to work and start sharing documents, well, uh, there are a couple of ways you can do it. You can click on files. What files will allow you to see all the documents that have been shared within the three of us, or you can click on attach and right away attach a file. But I like to do it from the files tab. It's kind of neat where I would see all the files. Maybe somebody sent the same file and I would see earlier we had a file shared one hour ago, we were collaborating on it. Now this is what I mentioned earlier that this is one of the best collaboration tools that will make collaboration seamless. Instead of me emailing Foz and Michael that attachment, and the first thing that they will happen to do once they get that email is download a copy of that attachment onto their computers. So we were having four copies at least of the same document without anybody editing it, and that's a lot of copies. So you will see that share button. Go ahead and click on it. I see that I can share documents using my OneDrive or I can use my computer to upload. Because I've been going to learn it, learning all about OneDrive and its cool features, I have all my documents right now saved in OneDrive so I can have access to them anywhere. I click on OneDrive and right now I will see all the documents that I have saved there. I want to share with my coworkers this presentation because I need some help in here and I want to update it. So I select that presentation, click on share. Now that presentation has been uploaded over here. You would see under the files tab, that presentation, the document that was uploaded here earlier. Right now, what I wanna do is go ahead and start working on that presentation because we are getting to business. So once I want to work on that presentation, all the way at the top, you will see the presentation name or the file name all the way at the top, you can edit, you can close. Well, I want to edit it, so I'll click on the drop down arrow, but I have three options. Hey, do I want to edit in Teams, PowerPoint desktop client, or edit in PowerPoint online? Well, I find it easier to edit in Teams. I don't want Teams to take me to the PowerPoint web app. I want to stay here. So what I want to do is click on edit in Teams, and I hope one of my coworkers join me because I need a lot of help here. So right now, I can see that there's that PowerPoint presentation. There's nothing going on. I want to add a slide. Title and content, add that slide. And I want to start typing in here. Don't worry, I'm a quick typer. And right now, I see that one of my coworkers is joining me and is trying to work with me. You will see that Foz here is editing. And right now, whatever Foz does, and I see that Foz is on this slide. Let's see what Foz has to add in here. So right now, 
Faz added, I don't understand Latin. Yeah, maybe a lot of people here don't, so I'll work on something else. But collaboration right now is so seamless that we can use the same document all together, join it, share it with our team, and start working. So once we're done with our collaboration session, maybe it's time to schedule a meeting and talk about those updates. On the left hand side, you would see the meetings tab and you probably guessed that's where you schedule a meeting. But if you remember earlier, under conversation, we did see that add a meeting or schedule a meeting icon down here below. So you can do it from here and also from meetings. I'll go ahead to meetings and give that a click. And right now I see my calendar. This is not any calendar. This is your Outlook calendar and all the meetings and upcoming appointments you have for today will be populated here. As you see later on today, I have an office issues that I want to talk about with a coworker of mine and I'll click on the class outlines meeting that I want to talk about and both of those are teams meeting. If you click on a meeting on the right hand side, you will see all the details about that meeting. Start and end time. You can chat with participants beforehand. You can cancel that meeting. You will see the description of that meeting. Who's the organizer and who are the attendees? Well, let me start one from scratch and all the way down below, you can schedule a meeting by clicking on schedule a meeting. And over here, I'll give my meeting a title. Down below, you can choose where is the location of that meeting. If you have rooms, you can choose rooms within your department. Down below, you can choose the start and end time. Well, I want to start at 3.30 and we'll end at 4. Down below, we'll add more details. We'll talk about a planner, Teams, and Excel. Just keeping it simple. On the right-hand side here, you can see that I select a channel to meet in. Well, I'll do this if I'm meeting with the whole team. I can choose which channel within which team I want to meet in. Down below, I can invite attendees. I'll go ahead and search for my coworker, Foz. And right now, Foz is an attendee. So before I go ahead and schedule, I want to make sure that both of us are available. This scheduling assistant that we know and love from Outlook, I'll go ahead and click on the scheduling assistant. And you would see right now, 3.30 to 4 is perfect for me and Foz. Foz is not available from 4 till later, five or six, I'll go ahead and click on schedule. And right now I did send out a meeting for Foz and I, and Foz can go ahead and accept or decline just like any Outlook meeting. Once I'm done, I can click on close and you will see that meetings for the update. Once I click on it, I can see all the information about that meeting. You know what? I want to join that meeting ahead of time to show you how things look like. First, it will ask me, hey, do you want to join now? Do you want to turn on your camera? Do you want to turn on or off your microphone? I like to turn on my camera and see how things are looking back there. Ah, that's not cool. I can adjust my camera. I can adjust my seating, make sure that it's not there or nothing distracting behind me. You don't have to worry about it. Um, I'll turn off my camera now. And I'll click on join now. So right now, I am in the meeting. I am the only one here in the meeting and you will see once I move my cursor, those icons will pop up. Hey, do you want to turn on your camera again? Do you want to turn off your microphone? Do you want to share anything? Or click on the ellipses for more. So let's go ahead and discover open and share. And this looks fairly a little different than Skype for Business, but it's kind of the same idea. Right now I can share my desktop. So anything on my desktop will show up to the participants. Window, if there is any window that I want to share within my desktop, I can show that window only. PowerPoint, if there is a PowerPoint presentation I want to show only, I can choose which one I want to show. If I click on the ellipses right now or more action, you can choose if you want the video with a blur and let's see how that looks like. I want to blur my background and you will see some of that makes my background blurry. If there's something distracting that's going on behind you or the colors are not kind of your thing, they're distracting others, what you can do is turn it on. You can turn it off. Which one do you like more? This or that? I like it this way because the hairs 
they don't look blissed up. So I look clean and tight. All right. If you want to turn on a keypad or starting recording, but if I want to caution you against starting recording, because if you want to start recording, you want to make sure that everybody is on board with the recording. Let them know. Turn off incoming videos. Maybe you don't want to see anybody's handsome faces. You can turn it off. But for me, I'll turn my video off right now. You're probably wondering, hey, where's that chat pane over here at the top? You would see the meeting's name, how long it's been running, and more icons to the right that lets discover them all one at a time. I can make it full screen. I can add meeting notes. And I can start taking notes over here. And right now, I can start taking notes with that meeting if there's anything I need to take notes for. Conversation? Well, maybe I want to start chatting with people. We can start chatting here. A little more to the right, I can add people. Maybe I missed somebody. I can go out here and add my coworker, Michael. Now, once we've seen we can add and invite people that we forgot, you can copy the link to the meeting. So you can copy that information and then paste it for somebody, send them an email. Or you can go to show more settings. And the settings here, you can adjust your audio devices, speakers, microphone, and camera. So if you're using multiple speakers, multiple microphones, you can choose which one works for you better. All right, so now once I'm done with the meeting, I'll go ahead and hang up. <coughs> Alrighty, so right now we've seen a video call within a Teams meeting. Right now, I want to go ahead and talk to my coworker, Michael. And if you remember how can I go ahead and talk to Michael, I can click on new chat and I will search for Michael. I want to elevate this chat to a video chat. I can call Michael. We can talk to each other if chat is not cutting it. But all the way over here at the top, I can start a video call. I'll go ahead and do that. I'll just say hi to Michael because I miss him. I'll give that a click. And right now, I'm calling Michael. So once Michael picks up, we will be able to see if this test works. Hi, Michael. Hey, how's, how's it going? going? All good. I just want to say I missed you, man. I wanted to see you. We started this video call for the video. Great. I missed you, too. Um, <laughs> glad I got to see you. <laughs> All right. Nice headphones, by the way. Thank That's, you. Okay, all good. Uh, we'll, we'll see you soon. Great. Thank all you. Right, bye. So I ended that video with Michael, and it was a kind of a short, weird video. So you're probably watching this right now and saying, uh, those two see each other every day, and that's kind of weird. <laughs> all right. So we saw how we can elevate chat into a video call. We can start a meeting and join with video, with audio, turn the chat pane on and we can change some of those settings. Now, once we talked about those amazing features for Microsoft Teams, let's talk about integration with other services, adding a tab, integration with SharePoint and OneNote, maybe any tabs that I want to add, I can add for my team. I'm talking about Teams here, right? So if I'm talking about Teams, I will click on Teams. So right now I can see that I am on the creating outlines channel within the training team. And you would see it, it's fairly highlighted and it's kind of obvious that I am here. So under creating outlines team, I'm under conversation. I can click on files, wiki, and add. Let's go ahead and discover those. Again, conversation where we want to start a conversation. Files, all the files that have been shared within that team. Wiki is kind of the Hawaiian word that means quick. And over here, what you can add is something quick for the team so they can know what is this all about? Is there like an outline that you wanna go for creating those outlines that you're talking about? So you can add here a description, team goals, team meetings, updates, anything you can do here so people can have access to it easily. So that's why they called it a wiki. Easy access, wiki, quickie, all right. So let's say, Maybe that's not cutting it. So what we're gonna do is add more tabs so people can have access to content a lot easier than ever before. If you see the plus sign here, I will go ahead and click on it to add a tab. And I will see a lot of things here. 
I can add documents, Excel, workbooks, forms, OneNote, PDFs, planners, the web, all those applications are under your fingertips. You can add them so your team can have easy access to that content. Let's say I want to create a plan. We have a plan to create outlines. So once I go ahead and click on plan, and you will see I am integrating planner with Microsoft Teams. All I have to do is give it a name, planning outlines. I'll go ahead and click on save. What do I have here? An integrated plan within Teams using Microsoft Planner. So if you've used Microsoft Planner before, you know how to use it. Or if you don't, I'll just go ahead and create a quick plan. What we wanna do here is uh, make scripts. And then uh, what I want to do, of course, because I love food, I want to order food. And click on add tasks. So right now I'm adding tasks and I can add people to tasks, start and end time to tasks, and then Creating a plan in a tab here will make people on top of their plans within Teams in that channel. So people can go back to conversations. And then I can mention my coworker that he has been assigned a task. Check it out. It's all the way up in one of the tabs. And what I mean by that is it's there. All righty. So I can tell Foz, Foz will get this notification, we'll go click there and we'll start working on those tabs. Let's say I always wanna add a website over here too because uh, people have access to Planner. Now they can have access to the website that they can get and gather information off of. So right now I'll go ahead and click on website to add that website. So I'll go ahead and add that uh, URL over here. I'll paste it and I'll go ahead and save. So people can have access to that website anytime they click on this tab. Quicky, quicky. Now all that content we can bring all together in Teams. We can specify channels, talk about certain things. That's what we meant by the best collaboration tool that Microsoft has so far. We will be able to create channels, talk about specific projects, adding content to that channels, adding people to those teams. Collaboration is more seamless than ever before. Now, once we've added tabs to our channel, this is huge. Getting everybody in one place, having channels so we can talk about specific topics, adding content in tabs that will make people access that content easily has never been better than this. Microsoft Teams, thank you. All right, <laughs> so right now, let's talk about our activity. And our activity will show me the feed of people who replied to me. So right now you see Foz replied to me earlier and it will show me that reply over here. So I don't have to think heavily about it and think deeply, oh, when did Foz reply to me? Or the last thing that Foz replied to me was, you will see them all here in the feed. And guess what? You can also filter. Right now, maybe I have one and you're like, hey, it's easy for you to figure it out. Well, if it's a lot, you have a lot going on, you can go to filter. And then you can filter by what you want to see, missed calls, voicemail, likes, following, replies, and so on. On red, most common one. Once you're done with the feed and the filter, you might wanna see the last things you've just did. So you can click on the drop down arrow and then change that to activity. So right now you can see all the recent activities that you have just created. I posted and created an outlines. I posted a tab, uh, I talked to Foz and so on. So this is huge here. You can look for your feed and you can filter for it and then you can see your activity. What were the last actions that you just did? Now, once we've added conversations, added our colleagues into one team, created new channels, talk about a particular project, made content easy to access to using tabs, let's talk about searching for content. Now, Microsoft Teams is powerful in terms of searching for content. That content is not gonna do me any good if I can't search for it. It's kind of obvious that's the search bar here is big and powerful. I'll go ahead and click on the search bar. And what I want to search for is, let's say, test, for example, and I'll enter. Well, it will tell me that no messages says test. Earlier, I was talking about emojis for somebody and I wanna know where that was. So I'll click on emoji and enter. 
and it will show me that earlier, or two hours ago, I did say something about emoji. Any suggestions on the coolest emojis? Conversation was with Foz and Michael. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. I hope I don't have any coworkers who are called emoji. Cool. Files? Nothing. Oh, there was a file I was looking for earlier today, and it was called... I don't know what was it called. But it had that cool word in it that everybody's afraid of. A test. <laughs> All right, so I'll click on test. Ah, this document is called class outlines. How did test get me there? The search bar is powerful. It searches in the subject line, it searches in the body of your document. If I click on that document, check it out. It says test here. So all the documents with test will pop up all the way down here. Search bar is amazing, powerful than ever. So you can search for your content easily, you can search for people, and you can search for messages, all by using the search bar. Give it a try. So we've navigated all through those amazing features for Microsoft Teams. Let's go ahead and talk about presence and managing our profiles. Now, if you've used any chat or software application for the past, what, 20 years? You know what that means and how to change your presence? In Microsoft Teams, it's also simple. All the way at the top right corner, just right next to minimize, maximize, and close, you will see your user icon. And you can click on that. And over down below, you will see your presence. You can set available, busy, do not disturb, be right back, and so on. And then you can reset status. And what that means is whatever you are doing, uh, if you're in a meeting, an appointment, it will sync your status here, and you can break it by selecting any one of those manually. So if I select do not disturb, and I highly recommend if you do not want to be disturbed, it will silence all your incoming notifications. Regardless of people message you or not, you will not be disturbed. Because if you're unavailable or busy, be right back or appear away, people will still message you if they need you. They're in trouble. They would want to talk to you. <laughs> so uh, please remember to use do not disturb once you really don't want to be disturbed. Saved. When you get messages from coworkers, like uh, maybe in that team, uh, there was something important that somebody mentioned. Foz was excited. I wanted to save that. So you see, once I hover over what Foz has said, I see more options where I can mark it as unread, copy a link to it, or turn on immersive reader, save this message, or like that message. Just like, hey, good job, man. I'm so, I like that you're excited, but I already saved it because once Foz is not excited, um, I'll bring him over and I'll tell them, hey, you were excited one day. <laughs> all right, so all those saved messages will appear here. So if I click on save, it will show me all the saved messages that I think were important, that I want to give back to, or I want to keep for the future. I can save them all here, so I can have easy access to them by clicking on them and then finding that content easily. All right. Moving on to the settings. Now, the settings are huge here. If I click on the settings, I can change the themes. Maybe I want it to be darker, high contrast. Oh, man. I'm not goth or, oh man, that's so dark for me. I like the default team, it's, it's brighter. Down below, you can choose what you wanna do with the application. Do you want it to start automatically when you start your computer? Do you want it to open up in the background? Maybe that's people what they wanna do. They wanna check their notifications using Teams. If the company chose Teams as their number one communication and collaboration tool. You can have it on close and keep both applications running. You can register Teams as the chat application for Office. Or you can change language. And please don't change it to something you don't know. Moving down to the next tab on the left-hand side, you see privacy. Now this is huge. Remember that do not disturb that I talked to you about? The presence that if you don't want to be disturbed? Well, sometimes you want people to disturb you. Especially if you are on do not disturb. Maybe the your CEO or your boss. So you can go ahead and manage that access. You want them to disturb you while you're on Do Not Disturb. Notifications. Notifications are huge here, and people have a lot of questions all the time here. Do I always need to get an email when mentioning happens somewhere over there in a team or a channel or somebody mentions me? Well, we don't want to do that. 
we don't want to get all those emails. We have enough emails already. So what I can do, I can change those settings. Well, please show me a banner or show in the feeds only. So you get to control all your notifications. Do you want to get banners, emails, uh, down below under messages? Also, how do you want to get messages? Do you want to see a banner and an email? Well, if every time somebody sends me a message and I get an email, I just want to go ahead and jump off of the Golden Gate Bridge. I don't want that. So I'll go ahead and turn it off. When I get a chat, I'll go ahead and see it in a banner and I'll go to my feed and I will see all those chats. Down below, you will have more control over your notifications with team role. If your team role change, if there are any sounds you want, email frequency, uh, no, never for me. So you can adjust this based on your needs. And once you're done, you can just go ahead and close. There's nothing called, I oh, need to save or do any of that. It automatically saves. Microsoft Teams is Microsoft's newest collaboration platform that will allow us all to seamlessly collaborate, co-author in documents, and have our colleagues all in one place. I hope you learned a lot watching those videos. Thanks for watching. Don't forget we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit learnit.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing Learn It.